we are checking out the new 2021 Motorola Moto G Power. I'm gonna go over everything you need to know about this new phone. I'll give you my honest thoughts on it, of course, but first things first, let's go ahead and unbox this thing and see what all comes inside the package. Popping open the box here, the first thing we get is the phone itself. And right off the bat, you can probably see that this new Moto G Power has been completely redesigned. We'll set it aside for just a second. And digging a little deeper, we also get a small stack of paper work and the SIM ejector tool. Beneath all that junk, just two included accessories, a USB-A to USB-C charging cable and the standard 15 watt USB-A wall plug. So with all that stuff out of the way, here is the new 2021 Moto G Power. And like I mentioned already, this phone rocks a totally new look from top to bottom, but there's a lot more to talk about here than just a redesign. First off, this new Moto G Power is now a little bigger. It comes in at 6.6 .6 inches versus last year's 6.4 inch size. And I do consider this bump up in size to be a positive. You get a big screen for viewing all your content, but it's not so big that the phone is difficult to manage. Some 6.7 or 6.8 inch devices are super tall and almost impossible to comfortably hold. This phone still feels nice and I consider it to be the right balance. Motorola also stuck with a fairly modern design up front. You got the same corner hole punch camera cutout, relatively slim bezels, and a noticeable but still fairly small bottom chin. Around back, this is where you'll see more of the actual redesign. We get a totally new look. The material is much of the same. It's still all plastic across the back at least. The frame of the phone to me though feels like metal. It's thick, it's sturdy, and it gives the device quite a bit of weight. And honestly, the rear plastic housing looks kind of nice as it is. It has almost a metal-like look with a silver finish and slight shine. There's even this crisscross pattern with a tiny bit of texture. And to me, this is a way better finish than the glossy plastic we got on Motorola phones last year. All in all, the way I see it, the device gives off a much more premium vibe. And at a glance, it seems easy to even mistake it for high-end materials. Taking a look around, you'll see we also get a SIM and SD card tray on the left side, on the right, the usual volume buttons, and the power button, which now doubles as the fingerprint sensor. Up top, the headphone jack is still still here. Down below, you'll find the USB-C charging port and speaker. Around back, a brand new camera setup, which I'll go more in depth with in a minute. And up front, the selfie camera and earpiece. Here's a quick audio sample of the single downward firing speaker so you can get an idea of what that sounds like. With the fingerprint sensor, this I think actually is another positive change. This side mounted power button combination is great. It's a comfortable, solid placement. It's easy to find, it's quick. I haven't had a single issue with it at this point. And nowadays, I'm just glad it's still here. It's super. 